Right at it. Right at it. Oh, John he's Spence. done it again. Just as he did at the John Deere for his first win. Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon. Whenever you're listening. <laughs> to episode 25 of the go get that podcast this has been an absolute crap shoot for the past hour trying to get a live pod up but um it will happen soon so um we're working on it there's a lot to break down this week um mm. and not all of it jordan um a big debate going around golf twitter with uh with the beer bottles flying on the 16th hole uh, i have my opinions on that and are we ever going to see Phil Mickelson or, or, or Bryson DeChambeau on, P, on the PJ Tour again? Uh, a lot happened this week that wasn't e- even waste management related, but I think obviously we start with Jordan Spieth because that's where this podcast is centralized, centralized around. So I'll start. Um, I've never more or less interested in watching Jordan Spieth play golf than this weekend because it was super predictable. Um, I knew he wasn't going to make any putts. He just, they just weren't falling. The golf gods weren't allowing them to go in. Um, his wedges weren't anything special. His irons weren't anything special. And his driver was horrible. Um, four in a row into the desert. I'm sorry. I do not care. Yes. He had streaks of good drives, but I don't really know if you can say that the driver swing is in great form. If you literally duck hook it four holes in a row plus provisionals. Um, I just don't know how you can be that off, but I mean, it's one week. He came in, died. He came in second last week and it's just like, whatever. Um, it's Jordan we'll, Spieth. We'll get another test of um, another test of, of golf next week at, at Genesis because that's a tough golf course. So um he's yeah. back folks the roller coaster up the roller and down. this wasn't even a roller coaster this is just like <sighs> the entire week yeah but i mean we went we went miscut second to irrelevancy on the weekend um concerning yeah um, we got the entire package over this three week stretch yeah i first of all i'll start with a little bit of disagreement i thought the ball striking was not great it wasn't pebble but i still thought it was pretty respectable for the most part besides sunday um the short game was terrible it really took him out of the tournament on thursday when he made a mess of 17 and the putter is just it needs it should have went down the cliff on eight at pebble it's so bad um i shared this stat that is pretty mind-boggling with uh the two gentlemen here with me this morning that jordan spieth lost strokes to the field all four rounds and putting for the first time at an event that he's played all four rounds at since the 2013 HP Byron Nelson. That's pretty That's wild ridiculous. and alarming. So Dan, you're the stats, man. Tell us, uh, tell the audience how uh, bad that is. Um, well, 22 minus 13 is nine. So that was nine years ago was his first was his like lost strokes every time putter. and that's some great math yeah <laughs> i don't know if, you know <laughs> i don't know if you guys are capable of it or not um so i thought i'll bring it to the forefront <laughs> right off the bat Dude, I, I can't talk right now Jeez, we spent so long on that obs oh crap my god that was so bad anyway computer was working hard greller was working hard this week to get yardages from the desert i mean that was off the tee was pretty bad. There were a lot of, I will, to be fair, a lot of them were just duck hooks left. So it's like, it's not like you have the two way miss like it was back in 1920, where you could get OB left, you could get OB right, and you just have no idea. Now it's like, all right, I think if I do this, I have a duck hook left, um, which is a problem. But I'd also say, Irons were fine, nothing special. There were no darts, but he gave himself very few chances at hitting darts um, because he didn't hit a lot of fairways, especially after Thursday. And then 
the the full wedge shots I thought were fine, um, but he couldn't seem to judge pitch shots, chips. No, no. The green. there were no like his around the greens were as bad as I've seen in a very yeah. long time. Like I mean, you, re- I mean, especially like the first thing that grabbed my attention was seventeen when he hit it into the water. Like he was on the upslope with an uphill chip. Yeah. How do you put that to nine feet? Like, that's just not Jordan Spieth, especially from a first cut lie. He's going uphill. I, I, that's just that, well, that really grabbed my attention because speak- those are things that he used to make. Speaking of the short game, I, I just, I had another stat on that too. Not only did Jordan lose strokes to the field all four rounds of putting, he did it with the short game. He lost strokes every single round Jeez, that's ridiculous. around the greens. I mean, he did it in 2020 in Mexico. So it's not as, I guess, recent. But I mean, it's more recent than uh, 2013. But I mean, the short game was just, it was horrible this week. I mean, as Bob said, you can blame the pitch he put in the water, but that chip should be to three feet tapping in for a bogey. That should have been and a routine bogey at worst. Instead, you're given to if away. not a par. I mean, he makes those most like some of the times. Like yeah. that's a that's a chip that you make. Yeah. Um, that's like green lights. That's just there's just no excuse making six from that scenario. No. Um, if it like I legitimately, especially like from, I mean, the, ch- the pitch was bad in itself, but like, if you're sitting two yard, if you're sitting 45 yards out, um, on that hole from where he was given where the drop will be, if you go in the water, less than 1% of PGA tour players are going to make a six from there. I mean, that's just not something that you can let happen, which immediately derailed the week in itself. Yeah. Well, he, he never was able to judge the greens in a couple ways. He couldn't judge the firmness clearly because he was sending a lot of irons bouncing over the back. They were honestly pretty good shots. I think he, there were his irons when he was in the fairway, he was maybe overdrawing them a touch, overcooking them a little bit. Um, but there were a lot of balls kind of running through greens. Um, and then he left a lot of like pitch shots and chips kind of short because he thought they would run out more. And then when he was on the greens, he, he gave very few putts a chance this week to go in the hole because his speed was horrendous. And the first few days he putted really well from inside of five feet. Um, but that's just because he had one every like he had, you know, a bunch of four footers. His speed was. One horrendous i mean every single downhill putt he was hitting at least three feet by Um, yeah it was horrible and i will say he did lose strokes every day putting sunday if he makes that two footer on 17 he gained strokes so he he putted relatively well on sunday and then he just had the the brain lapse there on 17 but overall just a, a weird week the short game which is has been phenomenal as of late just yeah completely unrailed and then of course the putting continued to suck but yeah i've never really um as a fan like found myself as uninterested in a weekend round as i did this weekend like i just like it was like a chore to track sunday and like eventually i just stopped because no one even wanted me to track because it was just like so ugly and no one knew what was going on and it was clear that he kind of just wanted to get out of there um I don't know what to attribute that to, but I mean, this is, this is the problem. This is the problem. And me and Jordan have been talking about this in the chat for a while now. Tournaments get very boring. If you start yourself out, if you shoot yourself out of the tournament on Thursday, like you literally, you cannot shoot yourself out of the tournament on Thursday. You have to be somewhere to give yourself because realistically, Jordan Spieth came pretty close to shooting himself out of the tournament on Thursday at Pebble Beach. Like it took a 63 to get back into it. He wins that tournament if he shoots four under at Monterey, which is very doable. Um, it's just yeah. like if you're going to shoot, you can't shoot yourself out of the tournament in those first two rounds. All right. Well, and when he was at his, you know, prime years, 15, 16, 17, winning all the time. You know, going back and looking through scorecards, it's like he started with a 66 or 67 every time. Every round. Even in his slump, he did. Even in his slump, is he started 
with right. 64 and then just derailed the rest of the week. Like this is very new to see him like doing this to start the week and just never be able like that's Dan, just confusing. Dan's been saying it and a large part of his but he's not scoring. Dan's been, I mean, shouting this. He's, he's not, not scoring. I'm I'm looking after sec the second round after we barely make the cut. He's got less birdies in two rounds than Mr. Thigala has in one round, the first round. And I'm like, I mean, it's it's unlike him. I mean, I'm used to a it's lot of so birdies, a double, a couple bogeys, but he's just not even making birdies at the moment, which is no Jordan Spieth is is always gonna be a person who makes a ton of bogeys. Like that's just how his round works. And he's just not making the birdies to combat that. Like he's not canceling them out with birdies. He's making four bogeys around and then making three birdies and shooting 73. Like yeah. that just yeah. can't happen. Um, well, yeah, it's, it's interesting, right? Because we did go through this sort of roller coaster of miscut. That was bad too. Yeah. Oh my God. He was playing amazing golf. Should have won that tournament too. Oh, that was awful. So it's like, at some point it's weird some, it's been a weird three weeks somewhere his game is somewhere in between there and i tend to think that um you know i last week i on the preview i said i thought he could win at riviera i highly doubt that now i think his ceiling next week is like a t8 <laughs> i mean there's like no um unless unless the driver gets because i was banking on the driver being the club that it was throughout the fall i know he only played one event but even at the yeah. open and the rest of the summer when everything else kind of took a turn it felt like okay he can still put the ball in the fairway had it on a string and who knows maybe cam's out there and they tweak something and um it works out better because you know he's gonna put in a lot of range work these next couple of days because he knows that that was pretty bad but um i think he you know, we'll get into our Riviera predictions at some point, but a lot of the, like, I wouldn't be shocked if he has a much better week next week and it's like a decent showing at the Riv because the short game and the putter just have to be better than they no, were. Oh, yeah. Um, if you're expecting him to win next week, I wouldn't bank on it. Um, <laughs> Riviera oh. is is not a course that you can win with your B minus game, like Jordan did at Pebble, besides round three, he did, he wasn't anything special. The other feels three too good to win with the B minus game. It, not even that it's the course. Like, I mean, if, if you, if you give yourself a decent, if you give yourself a good field at Pebble, I still think he can win that week playing True. how he did with his B minus game. Like it's just, it's a course that it, it, that's what makes the course what it is. It, it's a major championship type golf course. You just you have to have your A game to win there. And that's why you see sometimes people like Max Homa win, because if you have your A game, you can win there. You can beat the best players in the world who aren't on, who aren't sharp. But you have to play the best golf to win there. And I just don't see Jordan putting every he'd have to put everything together essentially. And the short putting there is just so tough. Um yeah. I, I kind of see his ceiling being a T8 with how everything's pointing right now. However, I'm not saying he can't win. I'm just saying that if he does win, it would be something would be drastically different than what we've seen right. these past three weeks. Well, I'm, I was going to say, I don't even think like the short putting is that big of an issue. Last, I mean, mm. Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, he missed the couple, but the speed was so bad. Like there were no. It was. Balls. It if was. You, if you give yourself four footers, if you give yourself eight or nine four footers around, you're gonna end up missing a couple. Like he very, very rarely did have a tap in, and even when he did, he missed that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, yeah. yeah, I mean that one wasn't even really a tap in. That's one you should mark and knock in. But at that point, mm. like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna um, disagree with you, Dan. I think if he ball strikes it the way he did at Phoenix at Riviera. That is, if he can just get the putter going, he'll be fine. I think you look at the strokes gain. I, I mean, they weren't pebble esque, but they were. I mean, he still gained. They weren't bad. They were yeah. probably slightly above average. The putter he was just positive ball striking. 
the putter sucks. I, I've, I've had enough of just, I mean, he, he knows it too. I don't think he's got any confidence stepping up to a putt that he's going to make it. And it's, it's frustrating. And it, again, going back to what we said about Thursdays, it all starts on Thursday. If he makes one or two early, okay, we're, we're starting to get the wheels turning here, but I mean, it's just 10 footer. I'd, there's just not a whole lot of confidence he's going to make it at the moment. Jordan's a there's player. Like, there's no, there's nothing pointing. Like I haven't seen him make a 10 footer that like, that like he should make in a very long time. Like there's just nothing pointing towards him making a putt like that right now, which I don't even know what to attribute it to at this point. Um, shout out Mary, first of all, um, cause she was there this week and she said that, Jordan just looked very, I'll actually read the exact thing she said. Um, In the meantime, let me pull it up. He actually, Sunday, Jordan, you pointed to he lost strokes, mostly because of the missed two-footer, but he did make three putts outside of 10 feet on his True. back. He did. Which was his opening nine, um, which was nice to see. I just think, like, honestly, I think mechanically the stroke looks fine. I, I just think his feel was so bad on and around the greens this past week. Like, like he couldn't chip anything close. He couldn't lag anything close. And Phoenix are tough greens to read. Like, you see guys miss putts by a couple inches out at Phoenix. He was missing putts by, like, two feet, three feet. Like, not even remotely close to the right line. Um, so, that's got to be, you know, hopefully we start Riv on one and he gets, like, a – three and a half, four footer to knock in for birdie and we get going that way. But otherwise it could be another longish week or short week if you, you know, it's yeah. not going that way. Before we uh, get into the tweet, I just wanted another, I had another thing that I wanted to point out. His approaches on the par five 13th this week were laughably <laughs> bad, laughably bad. We had round one where he was a whole club short 40 yards into the bunker where he made par. Friday, he blocked it right. It actually hit a good pitch on Friday, made birdie. Um, we didn't get to see the shot on Saturday, but he was way long and left. And you could see him kind of like kneeling down, like, what am I doing? Because he left – Saturday was when he chipped it – he chipped it short, and then he missed the par putt made bogey. And then on Sunday, he was in the first cut, I think, and he nicked a tree. What hole is this? 13, par five. Yeah. Yeah. He just – he played that hole brutally this week. And a lot of that, just the club selection, as we've already said, it was just – it's so bad this week. I mean, he kept on trying to stop it on a dime. It's just – it wasn't happening this week. The greens were so firm. And maybe it's because this is the, probably the first week they played all year where the greens were that firm. I know Tory's usually yeah. firm. But it was crazy firm. And that's why it was such a fun tournament to watch because you had to play shots a certain way. And Jordan just – he did not adapt – all week long to just no. So what Mary said was that she was worried about what Jordan looked like his state of mind was, which is something that she attributed to a few things. First of all, apparently the fans were not treating him very well, which I think he kind of knows going into the tournament. I mean, the tournament is very like, it's very unlike every other tournament. There's not a lot of like, it's not the same like stiff rules. There's a lot of drunk like people around there, which is kind of the atmosphere of the tournament. Like I'm sure Jordan knows that going into that. But another thing is he hasn't made a putt in months. <laughs> like no. how frustrated do you have to be to go that long without consistently being able to make an eight footer? And a lot of these putts are just like this close. A lot of them are bad putts too, but there are a lot of them, like even his good putts aren't going in, which just has to be absolutely devastating to his like, just, I mean, he must be so frustrated, which definitely attributes to, I think the lack of confidence. Yeah. And I don't want to take Mary's comments too far, but it makes you think, this year didn't play well. Does he consider skipping it next year? I know we're looking way off into the future, but if I, he I've, does, I, if he does, that means Tory gone, waste management gone. We could be playing. I mean, obviously we're only in February right now, but we could have a completely different schedule next year, which 
isn't it's interesting to think about. No, he's um he's I sure. wouldn't be opposed to him skipping it. Like I think it's a tournament that he can win at by the t- I, I think he'll win there at in the end by the end of he plays his pretty career. well there, yeah. But if he drops it, I think he could play just as well at Honda. Like if he replaced it with Honda, like I think Honda could be a great course for him. I'd love to see him play that course. I'd love to see him play Honda. Honda is a course where you, if you play smart, you can make a lot of good bogeys, which Jordan makes, and not hurt you. Like that's just like there are a lot of bogeys that are pars, which is and Jordan's always going to make birdies. So, yeah, I'm actually not as worried about the putter as you guys seem to be, and I know it's bad. Like mm-hmm. it's bad, but the thing is, is like. I just feel like he's he hasn't at least this week especially. He he gave himself no good looks at birdie like the part like you said on the par fives he had very few three footers up the hill for birdie. There were very few you know following along on the tracking there were very few darts being displayed uh, after the shot. Like it just, just felt like his iron play was like decent. But if you're not, if you have a, if you have 20 plus footers every hole. Battery's running low. I'll be right back. Keep going. <laughs> if you have, if you have 20 plus footers every hole, like the, the expectation is that maybe one goes in, but it's like, I mean, the problem, I mean, end of the day, the problem was the speed was so horrific that he just had to make five footers every hole to save par. And he didn't give him good chances for a 20 footer to drop. I forgot I what hole it was on Sunday, but he had a yeah, he had a 16 footer and he three putted for bogey on Sunday. Uh, six. Six. I think. I mean, like yeah. that's the thing. Six. Like various comments, like Jordan has no confidence on the greens. I mean, it's just insult to injury when you're having people heckle you, you getting the booze rain down on you. And there's nothing he can do about it because he's just not in the state of mind to where I can make these putts. It's okay. it's a tough tournament when you don't have your game on because, I mean, yes, Jordan is a three-time major champion. He's won a lot of events. But, I mean, even it's – these guys aren't used to it, these golfers. I mean, they're not used to being heckled. I mean, it, it's yeah. a different atmosphere there. Yeah. No, well, it, it, it is. This week it, in general. I think, I think we need to use this to transition into – Do we like this? Sorry. Do we like this change? In yes. Year? Yes. Is this a it. good thing for the game of golf? One week a year, yes. One week I a agree. year. I don't want to see Joel Damon and Harry Higgs ripping off their shirts off at Augusta National. And I know Augusta National doesn't want to see that. But it, it's one, one week a year. I mean, I thought it was electric. I mean, I thought the, I think Jordan's hitting the jackpot. I agree. The thing is, it's almost like the people that work there too. They were fine with it. They had the freaking uh, the the rakes or the brooms pushing the beer the beer cans away. They were ready for it. Yeah. And if they yes, were ready for it, that means they're fine with it too. One week a year, it got a bunch of positive praise on Twitter. Besides for the the older crowd, who for the most part didn't like it. But I mean, it's good. Which for, I mean, I can respect their opinion if for sure. Just, if you can't if respect that's, someone's opinion, it, then. Well, <laughs> but if that if that if you are really like that, then that's fine. I, I I just think that I think growing. I think one week a year, it, it's fun to see that side of of golf fans because we know that there is that. And my take on it is, I loved it, especially when Sam Ryder made that hole in one, when the beer cans went flying. I thought that was so cool. Um, I thought that was so cool. Um. That's, almost like a hat trick where they throw the hats onto the ice. Like it's, there is one thing I will say really killed the vibe. Come on with throwing the beer cans for a 20 yard Justin Thomas chip shot. <laughs> that's a little too far. Yeah, that's what I was going to If you're going to, if there's like a bunker hole out, maybe, not even maybe. Justin Thomas had an uphill lie. It was like 15 yards. Yeah. I'm not sure that is worth 
the beer cans. However, a hole in one absolutely is. Sure. And for that, I am all for it. Give it to me every year. It's only once a year. That's why I like, I like variety in the schedule and it's, it's, it's perfect. Well, I think I was, I mean, I agree with both of you guys for the hole in ones. Yeah. Go ahead. Do whatever. Cause that's, that's insane. It had been seven years since there'd been one, right. Molinari in 15. So go ahead, Ortiz and um, Sam Ryder, you know, do it. Do whatever you want. A JT chip in that uh, all of the guys, all of the pros that end up in that spot are trying to do the exact same thing. When they step up on the tee, they're not trying to hit a hole in one. I mean, sure, they would like to, but they're not like, all right, I'm going to draw this in from this side at this angle with this, you know, uh, landing angle, have it spin just a touch left, roll on the green and get, you know, find the bottom of the hole. That's not what they're doing. But JT, like JT's like, like that's basically like making a 35 footer. And if you're going to throw beer, beers on the green for making a 35 footer, that's a little um, too much, I think. And then the Harry Higgs, Joel Damon thing, that's just a little different. Like I, I think that was really funny. And if you want to give them a beer shower, go ahead. Cause it's Sunday and they're way out of it. And it is what it is. And they're done with the hole. But the JT chip shot was like, like, I think even JT was, if you looked at him, you're like, Oh, that's, he doesn't seem that enthused about getting a beer shower for chipping in a shot that, yeah. you know, gets him a T five, but it's not like, yeah. like if the leader does that on Sunday, maybe it's a different story. For sure. But this, this dude's four back. He's three groups in front of the leaders, and they're playing three sums. Like it, that's a little much. But I think yeah. once they did it once, and they did it twice, they wanted to just keep. They wanted to do it for every little thing that happened, right? And sometimes, you know, you just get trapped into or locked into doing the same thing over and over again because it feels fun. But, um. Yeah, I mean it's their beer. They bought it. <laughs> Do what you want with it. But yeah, I've have, I've have two more things on it. Um, props to Joel Damon and Harry Higgs. And I'm saying this because that's how you interact with fans. I mean, they the fans loved it. One week a year, it's fine. Props to them for interacting with the fans as well, because that's what we as the fans want. We want the players to interact with us. That's why I think the three of us cannot wait for the Netflix, the net Netflix, Netflix, however you pronounce it program where we're going to see inside the lives of these golfers thanks dan thank you but i mean i know the three of us cannot wait for that jordan's going to be in it um that's awesome and then my second thing was what happened that phoenix is growing the game not what's happening with the saudi golf league that's not growing the game what a fantastic transition i try yeah um I have some pretty strong opinions on this. Um, so I'll go first. Um, I think the idea isn't horrible. And I don't hate the way Greg Norman is trying to design it. What I do hate is the fact that he's making it, or it as a whole, is trying to rival I feel like you can make something like soccer where you have the, 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 the champions league or whatever it is after the premier league where you can have some like alternate events where you do like team ball or whatever it is. And like alt shot and like stuff like that. And you can make it fun. But if you're taking players away from the PGA tour, that's ruining golf. That's going to ruin professional golf especially if you can't play against each other because if you're having people in Saudi not being able to play on the PGA tour, that's just, li- that's just limiting the talent and it's a complete money grab. And I'd call myself a Phil Mickelson and Bryson DeChambeau fan, but if they go through with this, I mean, man, talk about ruining what could be a historic legacy. Um, in Phil's case, not, Bryson's case. I, I, I think in Bryson's case, in the future, it could be. I mean, Bryson has a lot of potential to be a very well-known figure 
historically in golf, even if, even if he doesn't go down as like the best player of all time, I can very much see him being someone who goes down as the person who changed the game the most by just like completely revolutionizing the long ball and the whole weight training thing. It could really like, and they're going to get a lot of backlash for it. Do you know anyone who's like for this? Like, I don't. I, um, I, I hope Phil isn't watching. I assume he's not watching because I'm going to get blocked on Twitter if uh, he is watching. But what are you doing? Like, what is the benefit for you to join? You are 51 years old. Um, you've made so much money thanks to the PGA Tour. You've won now, what, six majors? What are you doing? The only benefit Phil gets out of this is the money that he would be getting. I mean, just stay yeah. on the PGA Tour, play the PGA Tour champions. The only reason he would do this was for the money, which he definitely doesn't need. And then, I look, I'm fully against Bryson doing it too, but I get Bryson's perspective more than I get Phil's. The whole thing is a mess. But Bryson could use the money, not that it's right to take the money, but it's just a, it's, it's a dumb concept. I, I don't get why these guys would leave, and if they leave, the PGA Tour better not do, let them back to play. And I would hope the governing bodies, the RNA, Augusta National, the PGA, and uh, USGA do not let them play in the majors. Because I think that's one of the big keys in it. If these guys are to go play in the Saudi League, they want to still be able to play the majors. It's up to the governing bodies to not allow them to do that. Yeah, so I think one of the things that I'm really torn on is like, if someone like, Sahith Thigala or another like rising star wants to do it that's a completely different story because at that point a hundred million dollars or even if it would be less in their case that's something that you just have to take like if you get that this is always a discussion I have that if you are given the opportunity to set yourself and your family for life, or you'll never have to worry about financial issues ever again. You have to take it. The problem is Phil Mickelson is set for life and it was set for life a long time ago. And Bryson DeChambeau is also set for now with everything that he's doing. I don't know if Bryson's set, but I get where you're going. I, I, I can't imagine a world in which Bryson DeChambeau is ever in a financial I- issue situation. Like you see the way he talks. I, he I can don't see get it. himself into financial problems. I can guarantee you that. That's why he has <laughs> an agent. I just he has an agent. It. So yeah, and I also think Bryson's a lot smarter than people give him credit for. I, I think he's sort of like that. Rob he's a good Gronkowski guy. Type B, oh, yeah. where like he like he may act like he's he has a he has a big mouth like like Gronk, but I think in long term, I think he's actually going to be pretty smart with like his money and stuff. But I mean. I think that the Saudi league could be good if it takes like some of these rising stars and creates like, it keeps the PJ tour. It makes the PJ tour get better. And it also gives these guys a great living. But if you're taking legends of the game and turning them into puppets for the Saudi league, not even to play well, just to be there. Like it's, it's like you're on a, it's like a sports team. Your contract doesn't matter how you play. You're on, like, they're signing you to a team and you just have to play. Like, I, I just don't see the point. I think you might be getting the leagues mixed up. So there's two leagues. There is two leagues. But what I'm saying is that there's, I know that there's another league that's like team stuff. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like, Bryson and Phil would sign for a hundred million dollars. And then that, like, if they don't play well, they don't like get money taken away. Like the PGA tour, you have to play well to earn money. To be like, fair, they're I getting don't, signed I don't, for a contract like you would on a sports team. Okay. We don't yeah. know how the contracts work though, to be fair. We've just, we don't, num- but like, we've heard number figures. We don't know how they would work. Well, anyway. But I also don't think that Phil Mickelson would be taking it if it was based on how he played. Because we true, but we don't know he's taking it either. It's all we don't. Yeah, 
I mean, because Bryson did come out today on Twitter and say there's, there's a lot of stuff that's being said that isn't true, which I think is good for him to come out and say because the Saudi league is um, – it's just not – good for the for golf in general and for phil mickelson specifically like he talks about the obnoxious greed of the pga tour but then he's going to take a hundred million from the saudi government not even not even like sponsors like they do on the tour that's what people get mixed up sometimes is like what's the um you know why can't they make money from the why can't they take the saudi money but they I they mean, can take american money to like you have to look at it. I mean, that's a horrible look. I mean, yeah. that well, money is coming from, I mean, like it or not, this, this isn't a political podcast and this isn't even a political statement. Morally, that's coming from some really poor areas that money is coming from. Exactly. That's coming from like work that be, could, could, that's coming, that's, that could be blood money. It could be work coming from what we would consider modern day slavery. I mean, we don't know where it's coming from, but like, it's not good money. Like it's like, and it's a bad look on him for it sure. Is. If he takes it. Right. Well, especially if he's talking about this obnoxious greed that the PGA tour has, it's, it's very contradictory. And the, like the, the irony of going out and getting all this Saudi government money. That's literally from the Saudi Arabian government. And you know, they're handing you hundreds of millions of dollars. But it's and then there's this other league, the PGL, which I actually like don't mind all that much because they're they're doing it their own way. Is they have their own thing sponsors. anymore though. Like, I think I think it is, but it keeps getting mixed up with the Saudi golf. Yeah, league I mixed it up until about a month ago. Don't like don't do that. But the thing is they've got like their team, they've got teams set up, but they're only trying to get the best like 40 or so players. So that's going to be tough. And, and know, I also Brooks, think they're going to try and make it so that it like has some, like they have some coordination with the PGA tour on like the Saudi league, which is just like, yeah, you know, like, like I don't there. We could see that, but I also like, I think having these leagues are, are great for the PGA tour. Um, and I also think like it's a dangerous game for the PGA tour to play like, I don't think they can play the game of like, all right, go do it. See what happens. Like if they're like, leave the option open for the guys, if that makes any sense. Like they have to yeah, get 100%. more. That's why the FedEx cup playoffs money pot has gone way up. The players championship has gone way up. All the things they control, they're trying to raise the money. So that money isn't a reason people are leaving. Um, and a dish that, you know, the partnership with the European tour, I think will be very beneficial. Like the Scottish open is going to be sick this year. And I believe the Irish Open in future years will become part of the PGA Tour schedule. Yep. Like there's just so much more. They're trying to build a, a global brand between the PGA Tour and the European Tour that can push out the Saudi League, push out the PGL, um, which I think is better for the game of golf in general. Um, and it's like good for I, the I fans trust- too. So, yeah, I trust the PJ Tour way more than I trust the Saudi League. Like, that's just yeah. how it has to be. And the fact that, um, I guess, Phil is even considering it and, like, Charlie Hoffman's blowing up about it and then you're finishing last place out of the people that made the cut. Like, nobody, nobody, um, somebody on No Laying Up said this. Get but, Charlie like, Hoffman out of here. Like, Charlie Hoffman can go to the Saudi League for all he yeah, cares. But, like, nobody, I would have loved to stress Free Valera win. I yeah, mean, nobody, nobody don't wants get me wrong, golf. it was legendary the way he won it, but um, nobody's watching golf because of Charlie Hoffman. Exactly. All he, he does is like take golf. up space on Augusta leaderboards on Thursday. That's all yeah. he does. <laughs> Par three like competition if you, merchant. <laughs> if you want to go take the money in Saudi, go do that. Yeah, but like yeah. we're not gonna be tuning in on TV. That's the other thing that I think is interesting is like what TV deal do they have? Yeah, they're not gonna like no like if Phil Mickelson thinks that all his fans are gonna gravitate to him over there, it's they're gonna not. be a very small portion. Like yeah. I can tell you right now, Phil Tracker. I, I love for- Jordan Spieth, but if Jordan Spieth went to the Saudi League, I wouldn't follow him full time. Like I, well, it's just not. It's tough to track twelve hours. It's not worth my time. It's, it's not, not even not- that. It's just we know Jordan is a class act. 
I mean, like, I think that's one of the reasons we love him. Yeah. He's respectful. The stuff he does for charity is charity. He's a, I mean, a great person, not only a great golfer. I mean, doing that would just completely, I mean, it tarnishes, yeah, tarnishes reputation. But like, another thing is like, it, it just goes like, if the Baltimore Ravens moved to the XFL, like you wouldn't follow them right don't say that please just don't go there they wouldn't do that though right? they wouldn't do that but like and that's the same thing as jordan but like did anyone really think that any pga tour players were going to go to the saudi league a month ago like i didn't i thought it was no, just gonna none still up. have to be fair none still have but but some have well we just don't know who it is we do know that 17 people have signed it'll be interesting to see how this uh plays out Okay, so I, I have something I want to bring up. Well, hold on a second. Okay. I have, a, I have two more quick things. One is that if 17 people have signed, who are the on the other 140 that are playing in your tournament each week? And then two. Like a hero that, challenge every week. If you're Phil Mickelson, why are you still playing golf on the PGA Tour? You're bad, bro. I'm going to straight up <laughs> You're bad. All right, we don't need we don't need the Phil disrespect. He has a five year exemption now, so on the PGA Tour anymore. Sure, it's it Phil's Phil's qualified for more majors than we are, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't, mm. I don't care how many majors he's qualified for. Ah, uh, is he? Go play I, on. Go play Champions Tour and go. Honestly, what I really him, what I really want him to do is just go up to the. <laughs> Like he could make so much bag up there, and he'd be electric next to Jim Nance. And he'd be loved. That's what I'm saying. Do that. Don't make me mad and say you suck. All right, oh, guys. This I is love what Nick I Fowler, really want to. I really want to bring this up. What, do you have another thing, Dan? Yeah. Well, I right, think then go because I I want to like close this segment with this. Okay. Well, this I was a comparison that I remembered. I like because I just said he can't compete anymore. That he sucks. <laughs> That's like not true. That's okay. I'm gonna walk that back because I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to deal with the smoke if Phil Mickelson wins. I brought my ladder. That was my ladder. I dug a hole. Don't be wrong. Like, I'd be fine seeing Phil Mickelson win again. Like that was an electric PGA. Oh, I, PGA I don't. Victory. I don't mind if Phil wins. I just no. don't think it's that good anymore. Not at a major, please. We need the majors. I, I don't know about that. Like I'd rather win a major than like Justin Thomas or. Yeah, but Jason Kokrak. No. Oh. Win majors, bro. Yeah, Thomas is amazing. He wins turned up PGA tour events at PGA right, tour courses. That's tough. All right. Well, I did win the players, I guess. Eh, Mickey Mouse. Does he, dude, does he have a Valero open? Mickey Mouse. The golf He's... gods literally like nope. use the force to bring his ball back onto dry land on 18. Uh before um, you take us home, well, I wanted Louis to make... wasn't I wanted to make one more comment on this week. No. You pronounced his name incorrectly, too, so I wanted to correct you on it. Sahith Thigala. The kid. Sahith Thigala, same name. It's Sahith. It's – how is it, Dan? Sahith. Yeah. Sahith. I'm just saying it, like, faster. Sahith. It's, it's Sahith. not proper. Yeah. It's not proper. Oh, my God. But yeah, just the stones that that kid has. I mean, he's one good ga- bounce away. He's going to be a good team. golfer. He went head to head with Cantley, Shoffley, Brooks, Scheffler. I mean, that's impressive. He didn't lay down. I don't care. I don't care what you say about his morning collapse. He slept with the lead three nights. I'm counting it as if he won that, I would have counted as wire to wire. He slept on three leads. Yeah. He was one horrific bounce. From yeah, that was awful. Maybe winning that golf tournament. My I mean, that's sick. a birdie. That's a two shot swing. If, if he had, if that had stayed dry, if you all him, he would have needed was a par on eighteen. If you give him a JT bounce, he wins. Exactly. <laughs> no, I, straight up. In like wire that, to wire on that in that field, it's just like that's not his fault at all, and well, that's why even, that's why I think seventeen is very overrated. Um, we get the best par not, four in golf this coming week. Seventeen. Yeah, people think that seventeen is the best. Drivable par four in golf, no chance. Oh, Tenant Riv is much better. Tenant Riv takes much more skill and, and much less luck is involved. Um, I mean, we saw it last year. Jordan landed on the front right portion of the green with a little draw and it found the water somehow. Like, like that's just like 
you can get you some can hit really a great drive there. You can hit a great shot. You can hit a great shot and get penalized, which I just don't love. Um, so, anyways, he is going to be very good. I agree with that, Jordan. That's a good yeah. take. So here's my thing that I want to compare this to was this debate of will people take money over fame is not new. Um, if you guys remember, there was a big golf debate. We're going to go to the to Mr. Grayson Murray. Um, Where are we going with this? From the COVID times. When Grayson Murray, when, sorry, so when the Open was taken away from Trump, uh, whatever it was, what Trump. Trump's golf course. He's going to get back, I think. I heard, I think. He, but, he might. Go but ahead. anyway, so when they took it away, Grayson Murray tweeted out that Donald Trump should host an event at his golf course that same week and triple the purse. And he thinks that he could get a stronger field because he thought that people would gravitate to the money because in the end, are you going to turn down triple purse? Well, the general consensus was that was BS. Like no one's going to go to Trump's golf course over the PGA championship. But now, now we're looking at this and 17 people are taking this over. Wow. This is way different, honestly. I don't, um, I, I just, I just, I want, I, I'm curious to see if that had happened, if that scenario had happened, if, if, if Donald Trump had created a alternate tournament, would Phil Mickelson and Bryson DeChambeau have played it? Given we know their political history. It's, it's different comparing it's way different, major, I think. A major. I don't know because they're not going to be allowed to play in majors. Yeah. Well, we don't know that yet. And just we don't, but like on, on this Trump argument, first of all, who's sponsoring it? Because is Trump going to, sh- I don't know how much money Trump has. Like I know he's got his corporation and stuff, but I don't know how much cash he has on hand. So I think you could do it. I you would need so. the question of sponsors. And I just, again, as Dan was about to get into, I don't think people are missing a major championship to play a Donald oh. Trump invitational. I, 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 that's what we thought, but. If Phil Mickelson, if if there's a no, if you're not allowed to play in the majors, they're not showing up in the Saudi league. If they can't play in the majors, they're not showing up at the Saudi league unless they like genuinely all they care about is money. It's all on the governing bodies to pretty much put their foot down. It's as simple as that. I don't know. But it's an interesting I mean, question though, Bob. I, I I like it. If they because if, that I'm more gravitating to the point that how much of a non-negotiable is playing in a major like sure, is that the deciding factor <laughs> everything i think because I, I don't know and if it's not then that's their choice but they suck that's, that's you're saying it very nicely Dan. i think there's yeah. other words that you could use but yeah you're an idiot <laughs> he's going he up in the level hundreds of millions of dollars especially if you're bryson like not, go tame Augusta, bro. You haven't done that yet. Par 67. It's kicked your butt every time you've played. Same with you, Phil. Go win your U.S. Open. Can't do that in Saudi Arabia. It's not the Saudi Arabia. Okay. All right. <laughs> None of these tournaments are actually taking place in Saudi Arabia. These are going to be on U.S. soil. So there's There'll be one in Saudi Arabia. Guarantee it. They'll yeah. probably have like their headlining event in Saudi Arabia. You know what the one thing about the Saudi Arabia League is? If they can get good golf courses, I might watch because the PGA courses, as we've talked about, mostly. Well, suck. I mean, I I think that's a very point. If they can put together a tournament where Bryson DeChambeau and throw out a name that could play in the Saudi League, throw out two names Charlie besides Hoffman. Phil Mickelson and what? Charlie Hoffman and Ian Poulter. Yeah. All right. Bryson DeChambeau and Ian Poulter versus Phil Mickelson and Charlie Hoffman. I'm not tuning into that, actually, in a way. <laughs> All right, so throw, so throw out two good names. Throw out two good DJ, names. But DJ. Two good names aren't okay, showing Okay, so DJ and Bryson DJ versus could. Phil and Phil Poulter. And I'd, watch, I'd watch Poulter. Phil's team is getting crushed. That's a blowout right there. Okay, but, but put those two 
put those two in a four ball or, or an all shot on the first trio on the fir- on the first tee at Wolf Creek. Would you watch? I'd watch. That would be sick. They'd be hitting bombs. They'd be that course is if it's on when Spieth is playing, I list. could not care less. Who's here's the thing. Who's who's covering the event? Yeah, that's part of it. Like it like it genuinely, if you look at the four, there's only two options. It's Fox or it's Turner. And Turner's already got the match. And I know Phil's a big match guy. So maybe that should be his career path from here on out. But it's like just throwing the, shots at Phil. Well, I don't know, it's mad. It makes me mad that he'd actually consider this. Yeah. My dad says the same thing. And my dad's been watching Phil since before we were uh, born. So, well, just, well, also just the irony of I know I know I've said it a couple times, but the obnoxious greed part. Like, are you kidding me? Get out of here with that. <laughs> you're you're gonna, you're gonna say it's obnoxiously greedy. You know what's PGA take like make a lot of money, but then you're gonna go make a lot of money. That's not even like good money. What's funny is we're recording this on Monday night, February 14th. I'm curious to see what Tiger, I'm sure Tiger Woods will be asked about this on Wednesday in the interview room at Riviera, what he thinks. And I am <laughs> looking forward to seeing what he has to hear. I hope someone asks him about Phil because they're, I mean, they're, I don't know if they're friends, but they're in the, they're, they're in the same tier together. So it'll be curious to see what uh, Tiger says about it. Yeah. I hope I hope somebody asks him that question. Not I don't I mean I'd like to hear about the rehab when he's gonna play next, but he's not gonna give you that. No, I'd go straight straight up. What do you think of the Saudi League? What do you think of the PGL overall thoughts? Because that's something I think he'd give you. I I do too. Although I could also see him being like I don't know. I, I got but I could see him being like a PJ Tours like scapegoat, yeah. like doing his dirty work, like it's horrible. I think it, I'll never touch it. Like I could see that happening because you know the PJ is ti- the PJ is like Tiger's their guy. Like yeah, well Tiger made them. Tiger yeah. made them. So purses yeah. are what they are because of one guy. Hundred percent. So, so Phil should go join the Tiger League if he wants more money. Tiger League. <laughs> Imagine Tiger created a league. Now that would be. That would be interesting. That would be something that would be very tough for the PGA Tour to compete with. Yeah. I don't see but Tiger being that type of guy, though. But No, he wouldn't, but it is what it is. Because uh, Tiger would ruin his legacy then. And Well, I mean, if he created a league out of, like, like with the same charity work that the PGA Tour does, the same kind of, like, no. basis of it, and was just, like, calling it something. Oh, well, maybe. But, like, if he did something like that, I mean, Tiger has worked – this entire last decade on rebuilding his reputation. And frankly, he's done a decent job at it. Like yeah. like him or not. Yeah. I mean, like him or not, you have to give him credit for the fact that like, he seems like he's a very good father and is not like making the same mistakes his father made. Um, and he also seems like he really cares about like changing, even though I know there's probably still some like drug problems, but like, that's not as easy. That's not as easy a fix as some people may think. So, I, I think there's there's something to be said about him at least wanting to become a better person. And I just don't think you just throw that all away by going against the PJ Tour and making him look like a money grab person. But no, yeah, it's an interesting question. Cool to is. touch on. Do we have anything else from this wonderful weird week of golf? With shirts flying off weird. and the Saudi that was, news. That was incredible. <laughs> um, no, I don't think so. I think um, we'll be back for the Genesis, which yeah. we've kind of already given well, some thoughts about. But okay. hey, well, we went, we started down, we went up at Pebble, went down again. So uh, the trampoline is bound to come out right then when we go uh, to Riv. I hope so. You get I hope it. So. Hopefully, hopefully. so Puts it in the rough, and then the ball just bounces back into the fairway. What's the schedule looking like after Riv? It, it goes. It, it's we go API API players match play. Oh, I know yeah. he's probably Valspar. only gonna have two more. He's weeks not off. playing Valspar. He's no, not I know, Valspar. but Valspar's in between. No, no, I'm talking about speed schedule. Yeah, no, I know, but I was just. I thought you were okay. Yeah, I thought you were going PGA Tour schedule. 
I think it's API here. players, uh, match play match Valera play Masters. Masters, yeah. We got five. So, more. I mean, yeah, four more tournaments until Augusta. Yes. Let's get through it. Oh. I mean, Alrighty. Hey, I think that's all. I, know, I will I say so. we can talk a more about it some other time. I, I mean, I know, I don't know. If he, if he's like committed, committed. I know Bob, you have on pretty good word that he would like to go back to API, but it would not shock me if he wasn't there. Oh, so. it would 100% shock me. He hasn't given a commitment yet, to be fair, but I mean, he's he got... has given a commitment, but I. It'd be this a entire schedule. Shock. It's unlike the previous. Like, if he takes API off, it would be a significant gap. Um, two weeks. Three, right? No, two. two. I think he's back at API after last year. He's absolutely back. I, no, I think he will be, but I wouldn't be shocked. I mean, I wouldn't hate seeing him at Valspar, but I mean, he uh, kind of a little unfinished. If he takes, well. if he takes API and Honda off, I'll be very disappointed. Yeah, I'll be very disappointed if he takes API off as a whole. Oh, API I, is a great course. Yeah. For yeah, I him. love API. I think I think like, he'll be there, but I just I it would not surprise me if he's like you know what I just. I need more time or I need, Ever I just, tournament reps aren't what I would need right now. I think it, you know, so the, MC, the MCs at Riv this week, which is very possible, by the way. I am I would not be shocked to that. He is, he is 100% at API, but we'll see. Yeah. Well, this was fun. A lot of fun topics to talk about, not just how Jordan played with the Saudi. So that was enjoyable. No, at no, the no, yeah. All right, we will see you guys in episode 26 for the Genesis Invitational, one of our favorite events, the preview for that. Eh. What? what am I? I don't know about favorite. All events. right, well, you're in the minority here because Dan and I love it. It's a, it's a great course, though. It's one say. of my favorite, yeah. I don't know about events. It's one of my favorite courses. Yeah. Yeah, All righty, well, we'll see you guys. We will see you guys then.